All right, a little bit of roll blade in these. That's definitely a deal, and this is a save of the week. Don't think you get many saves like that in your career, so you've got you've got to really enjoy those moments. So Power Side have released the next Noir 125. Rosie's went for that smoky effect. Them skates and intuition went for that marble kind of feel. And Power Slide seemed to have gone for like an ultrasound scan or something like that. It's like one of those mad gender reveal things. Imagine if that was how you genuinely revealed it to your friends and family. Had the ultrasound scan and then just got it like printed on the skates, like. Yeah, 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 the wife's pregnant, like, um, I think it's a boy like. So, what, what do you reckon? It looks fairly healthy and stuff like that. I'm actually really into this design, I like it. Rosies have got a couple of new bits celebrating 70 years of business and 30 years of doing inline skating bits. You've got an M12 and a 92, so an AG and an Urban Skate, inspired by one of their like original hiking boots. It's a lovely collage. You've got Arlo in a couple of pics there, you've got Rene, I can see Jess, I think that's Cesar. I particularly like the lace hoops on it. I'd be interested to see how long they last or like how well they fare when you get a few like dents on them. Like, how much are they gonna take before they absolutely explode off the things? It would have been really good if they uh, copied the shoe design like a little bit more and gone for that, that other kind of slightly placed back loop like they've done on the Nick Lomax Aeons for instance. But again, like, I think that's like, open for a little bit of bashing and then like becoming redundant quite quickly. I actually got a fair bit excited that they might be like re-releasing that hiking boot, but they're not. Why not? Tell me why. Rosies have this really interesting history. They were actually established making hiking footwear. They're in an area, well Italy, and a specific area known for making quality footwear. In fact, in the 70s, Montbelluna was like the sports footwear capital of the world. You're telling me in that meeting where you're talking all about your rich history, you're flicking through the old catalog going, oh, look what we used to make, look at these skates. Oh man, look at these boots, yeah gonna make a skate out of these out oh, they're gonna be absolutely wonderful which they are they are actually really good design but you're telling me nobody went uh do you know what should we uh should we should we make these boots again as well that'll be i think that's a good idea you know like there's a gap in the market for that no one even suggested that you definitely missed a trick there in the business world that's what we call a rolled top side oh so close man just imagine it every signature skate comes with a signature shoe as well boot shoe winkle picker loafer <laughs> there's loads of options the shoes have already been made in the past and only has done half of the work for you already anyway you could have made him like a nice like folk dancing shoe to go with his Neil strikes me as a man that would have gone for some sensible but practical wing-tipped brogues, man, in a nice, like, vegan leather, you know? Thinking about the planet and stuff like that. Grant Hazeltoon could have had some, like, spotty Converse-type numbers. I mean, how hard can it be to knock those things out? Rosies have done similar things in the past as well. Would have been an absolute doddle, like, you've got the blueprints, you've done it all before. Just crank up the machine, man. Plug the shoe machine back in and get to making those shoes, man. Oh, could you just imagine, like, the release, like... Here's the skates. Oh yeah, by the way, there's a hiking boot as well to match them. No way. Always on it. Always on your Rosies. Here they are, like, climbing up a mountain in these Rosies signature hiking boots. Gets to the top like victory, holds up his skate, <laughs> and then skates down like chasing a couple of mountain goats in that. Oh, it would have been amazing. Neil's at like the G20 summit or something, giving some like amazing talk about saving the environment in his Rosies bros. And then he just steps out, puts on his skates to match the brogues, and then just goes and does a trick or something. They're all like, yeah, let's get behind this kid. He knows what he's doing, like, saving the planet, and he's having a great time. I'd have been absolutely over the moon with those boots. I actually did it a quick search, and if you are interested in those boots, there's a couple of pairs floating around on eBay. Imagine if Solomon come back, yeah? Imagine if they come back. They're definitely going to be doing the skate and the shoe. It's the best, it's the unbelievable combo. They go together better than Ant and Deck. Someone who is looking to fill that little gap in the market is them skates and Clarks. A couple of weeks ago, John teased up a Clark style tab. Now he's got more pictures up. You can see the gold detailing on there. You can see the four dots on the tongue. Looks like it's gonna be gray to match the skates and it's probably gonna be a Clarks wallaby. As I've mentioned before, Clarks are absolutely steeped in history, man, and culture, like music culture, particularly like rap culture and like the Wu-Tang clan. 
plan, Jamaican culture. People absolutely love these shoes. UK school culture, oh my goodness, man. The Clark's Wallaby is elite, top tier, schooly, man. Imagine going to school, you're like, you're, you love rollerblading. You've been skating all weekend and then you're like, oh, school on Monday. This is gonna be boring. But then you've got your Clarks, them skates, wallaby like striding in the school, head held high. And it's like, what are those? Great, they look sick. I would have loved these as a kid and I'm still excited about them. I'm definitely gonna get them, man. I really like this collaboration. I think it's probably one of the best collaborations in rollerblading ever, actually. It kind of transcends rollerblading, does it? We're getting into other markets and it's kind of an authentic one as well. They're also bound to be better than these stinkers. Do you remember these things? I take them round the back and dispatch them. I mean, I say that now, but I definitely had similar shoes to that. I actually had fat yeah. farm shoes that were exactly like those. Oh, my monsters. Also seeing that John was at that brain dead wrestling event out in Paris Fashion Week. Are we gonna get some collab leotards coming in, right? The Them Skates wrestling team. Oh, mate, imagine going up against Derek Henderson. No chance, right? He is, he's gonna be easily the king in a ring. Oh, they, sh they should have that at the Blading Cup, actually. I've got some new merch. So I've teamed up with Pillar of the Skate community, Muzzle in particular, Sam Curry, who runs the gaff. Sam is like the poltergeist of rollerblading. He's involved in loads of stuff. He's always <laughs> moving things about, but you can't see him and you don't know he's involved. So he probably doesn't get like a lot of the credit that he actually deserves. He actually reached out to me ages ago. He's been a big supporter of what I've been doing from very early on. And we were like, yeah, let's make this t-shirt together. So we did. It's an NFT shirt. We don't really know what the uh, score is with NFTs and we thought it was funny that we were so like naive to the process and everything. Pokes a little bit of fun about like the modern world and what's going on with it so you can actually uh, cut out your NFT and upload it if you uh, know how to do it. I got together with Rich Taylor again, he's a rollerblader, obviously working with Sam at Muzzle and Artisan Branding Co. It's all printed at Sam's print shop so we're keeping it all within the industry. All the money that like comes in from this like helps support me to keep this going. It's also gonna like go back into more products, more ideas. So it all keeps the ball rolling, man. So the quick story behind Spotted Dog for those of you who don't know. Spotted Dog comes from my dad. <laughs> Check out that outfit, man, and that hair. Absolutely wild, man. He used to say it all the time when I was a kid. Me and my cousin picked up on it. We thought it was really funny. We started it saying it all the time when we were out skating and like, I still say it today. It just means like good, basically. If your cousin does a good trick. Spotty dog. Two yolks inside one egg. <laughs> Spotty dog. A Clark's collab with an inline skating brand. Spotty dog, man. Pom, I've also got some new gear. You've got this t-shirt here with a print there. And it's got a bit of print on the back as well. You've got a bag. And you get all sorts of stuff in this bag. Like you can get the uh, brand new Monty Python paperback. You can get like kitchen tin foil in there, you can get a couple of kiwis, you can get, a, what have we got here? Mellow yellow miso soup paste, you can squeeze that in there easy, you can get a water bottle in there, you can even get a pair of pomelo socks. Look at these, lovely little numbers and they've got the O on the bottom as well. What a treat. Did you see these two absolutely traveling charlatans, Joe Atkinson and CJ Wellsmore on their little skate tour of events and contests, got hooked up by Calvin Klein, like fully kitted out in an outfit, man. <laughs> They're having a great time, them two. Joe Atkinson's been on an absolute tear, winning the Pannonia Challenge. Look at the state of that, man. That is some beautiful movements. Very reminiscent of Dominic Sagona, who's been on the rip recently as well, fully back in training. There's been a couple of new summer signings. Dead Wheels have picked up the lightweight champion, the billiard shark, ex-professional shot putter, John Bellino has joined the team. That team is absolutely bananas. That's gotta be probably one of the best wheel teams around at the moment, man. John Bellino and the Wheel Warriors. Dead Wheels have partnered up with Senna Ramps again to bring you the full release of the Sakura wheel. Last year there was a material shortage, so only a few people actually managed to get hold of some. This year, hopefully, more people who want them will be able to get them. It's that lovely pink wheel again. You've got a pin with it. It's also promoting a really good message, stop Asian hate. Soichiro is absolutely cut loose on this one, man. He is unbelievable. Such a good skater, full of style and control. You can see that, like, Chiaki Ito influence on his skating. 
everything's kind of like calm and still and well balanced. You can actually see that influence in all the rest of the Japanese skaters, even in the Korean skaters as well. There's like a similar, very similar style. All that influence is coming from like the same place and they're like their legends and it's like, it's beautiful to see man. Joey Lung has been announced as a new pro rider for Undercover Wheels, which has definitely appeased a few people who were fairly livid about that USD Unpro post a couple of weeks ago. Oh man, there was absolutely a riot in the comment section about that one. Well now he's on the pro wheel team for Undercover, so everybody is delighted and it's really good to see the community get behind such things. I wonder what he's thinking about in his picture, it looks very pensive. He's thinking about super rare Grateful Dead t-shirts and doing wall rides in really risky, awkward places. The edit to go with this thing is a fair treat as well. He's flying up in the air doing wall rides on rocks, doing stair bashes to things. Really good one man. Right, so the only real reason I'm going to mention this Barbie lot is because at the time when everybody started like firing messages to me and sending me pictures of it, I was actually making a video about Chance of Rain 4, a VX gritty skate film which is like an hour and 14 minutes long, absolute blinder light. And I've got all these people sending me pictures of Barbie just because she's got roller skates on, man. Oh my goodness, two different worlds. It's just one of them, like you've got Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie, Barbie and Ken, they've both got on rollerblades, spray painted up some Impala skates to match the doll skates from like the 90s. And you know, yeah, maybe some young kid who's a fan of Barbie will watch this and uh, want to get into the rollerblading, which is uh, kind of cool. What I do find funny is that uh, Will Ferrell, who I assume is meant to be the bad guy in this, is uh, wearing a pair of Razor Colts. Too easy, I've got a rock of new bits up, you've got hats in there, there's plenty of t-shirts. I'm particularly fond of this, I want to believe one. Kind of gives me that X-Files kind of vibe. You've also got the frog one, singing too easy. All in a lovely slime agreement as well. And I'm assuming that frog one's got to be a reference to that bud advert. That was a good advert, man. Fresh out of lurking in the shadows, Chris Farmer has got himself a signature Prime 5050 frame. So the core of the thing is going to be in this lovely burnt orange colour. It's got wheels to match that. The wall is going to be charcoal. The axles are going to be black and it's all gonna match up with his pro skate. It's a nice look. Farmer's gonna net himself $10 for every set of frames sold and the, uh, apparently the frames are on the boat and they'll be shipping in late July. You can now get your dirty mitts on the different parts of the rollerblade blank skate. There's replacement soles, wheels, frames, all that kind of good stuff. You can't actually get like the full skate size range yet. That's not been released, but um, I'm assuming that's coming soon. You may have also noticed Sven knocking about in a nice gray pair. I believe this is called Moon Gray. It's gonna be a team skate, so I imagine that's coming relatively soon as well. They've teamed up with Justin Barr of the Moon News to create this blank city t-shirt. You've even got Tom sneaking himself in there for a little bit of modeling. Somebody's obviously told them down at Roller Warehouse to do a little bit of a cleanup because they've come across some 616 anti-rocker wheels, man. At some point in time, everybody's had a crack at these colourful wheels, haven't they? Tino Sim put in a solid performance to win the E-Money Memorial Comp. Look at those winners chains, man. They are something else. You definitely go the extra mile to win those things, man. Like, well done to him. Nicola Torelli's got a wizard skating video up with loco skates. This is really good. This is the kind of skating I like to see him doing. None of this, like, darting in and out of people. Or there is a tiny little bit of that. It's mostly, like, doing tricks and really getting into all the wizard moves. And that's really great. And the film is, is absolutely exceptional. Shout out to Tom Sharman. He's got the angles. He just knows all the angles. He's made it look absolutely beautiful, man. So big shout out to Tom. Make sure you go and check this one out. The Shinobi Blade Gang have got a VOD called Diamond in the Rough. It explores all the rawness and all the like perils of skating in Lagos, Nigeria. Really just like real stuff. Interesting video, man. Great skating in there. Definitely like go and check this one out. Soichiro's been fair busy, like he's also got a little edit out with uh, them skates as well, man. Just doesn't stop. And it's just as good as the rest of the stuff, like it's all just amazingly stylish, man. Absolute style school. Sticking with them, Marius and Pat put this little thing together, a few nifty manoeuvres in there. Pat does this thing where he kind of pretends like he's gonna do a royale, but then just like airs over the rail. It reminds me of, I'm sure if Monche has done something like this before, or uh, who else is there? Julian Barr. I'm sure he used to do stuff like this as well. It's really funny, actually. I'm quite into it. A couple of podcasts definitely worth listening to. Up on the Jump Sheet podcast, you had Tim Franken, 
giving you the lowdown and the logistics on like setting up things like the blading cup and then chatting to Yan while she had Gonzo man another absolute style master good bit of history there so make sure you check that one out I reckon that's about it for this week thank you so much to all my Patreons I really really appreciate your support definitely gonna have some more exclusive videos for you soon here's another video you can watch if you like this one it really does help me out if you like comment subscribe share all that kind of good business and uh See you again pretty soon, I reckon. Spotty dog.